Hi there. I am live. It says this is Liz. I'm going to just go a little slowly till people start to join in. I'm keeping it simple again today. One camera, one project. Um, I don't have anyone joining in yet, so hopefully very soon. There's a couple of people. Hello there, viewers. Please say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Um, I hope that I'm able to see your comments here. So I am Liz from Liza Jane Designs in Afton, Minnesota. I am today going to do um, the paintable transfer project. Hi, Donna, um, that we talked about last time, but today I, I brought all the supplies. So let me show you um, an example here. So this, if you recognize the transfer, it is from the Christmas Valley. So this is the Christmas Valley Mountain Lodge transfer which is just black hi shannon um so it is black on whatever color you put it on top of right but i like to add subtle color to my transfers and i like to add it before i put the transfer on so that the black lines of the transfer really pop and stand out and I'm not covering them with my coloring material. So this particular piece is on an old repurposed cupboard door. So that's a cab, a door to some kind of cabinet and it has a built-in frame, right? So I will be painting that probably like a charcoal gray or something like that to finish up this, but we're gonna be working towards something like this today, but I don't have any more cabinet doors of that size. So we're gonna use the more readily available IOD 12 by 16 inch wood panel. So I'm gonna use this panel on this size, on this side. We know we can use them both ways, right? To get a framed look or to get a gallery wrapped look. So we're gonna do this. And let me just peel off, I'm just peeling off this label. And I'm gonna turn my laptop down to the surface. I'm telling you, this is not a fancy approach coming into 2023. It's one of my resolutions to learn more about camera angles and stream yard and all those fancy things so that I can bring you a better, a better production. But for now, we're just doing the basics. Probably y'all know that if you take a heat gun to a label, you'll be able to remove it more quickly. So I'm gonna do that here. So a little bit of heat just kind of gets the glue underneath warmed up and loosened up. And then, pow, that comes right off. So where it was sticking, it is now off. And it's not even sticky at all there. So that's good. I am, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to take a sanding block and just make sure all that adhesive is off. Um, there we go. So let's begin with our transfer. So I'm using the Christmas Valley. This is the one I set aside for myself. I am completely sold out of these in the shop, but I did put one aside before I sold them all out so that I could have some fun playing with them too. Um, 
So I'm opening the brand new package. We're going to turn to, um, there it is, right on the first page. The Christmas Valley Mountain Lodge. And I'm going to take that out of the pad. And I'm going to probably work upside down so you can see it better. So you see this fits perfectly on the 12 by 16 inch panel. What I'm going to be using here, um, today I'm using this wax-free transfer paper. It's a product by Soral. You can get this on Amazon or Blick, any art supply place. I don't know of other places, but it might be available elsewhere. Um, and there are other transfer or like carbon paper, anything like that is what we want to use. This transfer paper works like carbon paper, but it is not, see, it doesn't, well, it kind of comes off on your fingers, but not like carbon paper would. You can see that I've used this before, but you can use it again and again. So I'm going to lay my transfer paper down on the 12, there it is, it's on the wood panel. I'm going to work upside down so you can see it and just put this on to just like that. It's still on the nonstick paper. The grid is here and I'm going to grab, I hope, a pencil. So I have an orange colored pencil here and I'm going to just outline the things that I want to paint in various colors. I don't need the detail, just the outline. So I'm going to get these mountains and just mark that because I know I want this to be sky and I'm going to want the mountains to stay white. I'm going to lift it just to show you what's happening here. So you see the mountain, I hope you can see. The mountain is appearing on the board now. So I'm gonna get that back in position and I'm not gonna wiggle it around too much, but here's the other mountain. And this is not doing a thing to harm the transfer. It's not even really making much of a mark on it. So there's the second, I'm gonna outline where this roof is of the cabin and where the snow, so not worried about the shadows and details, just these shapes, these big shapes that are gonna be different colors. Here's a chimney, so I'm gonna mark that. In my previous one, I made that a little bit reddish brown to look like bricks. So this will be whatever color I want for the cabin, probably a brown, and just kind of tracing around while the, I'm not sure if it's acetate, whatever this um, grid paper is, and marking some of the trees. And again, just the basic shapes. Down here is where the house ends the snow comes up i am going to mark the window because on my original and i'll probably do it here too i put a little bit of yellow in the window so it looked like some light coming from outside so the areas that you're going to want to add color to are the ones that you want to make sure you you rough out with this transfer paper. You don't have to worry about each individual log. I am going to mark, I don't even know what this is. It's like a little picnic table or something. It's got some legs and then it's covered with snow. So I want to make sure that that's very white when I get to that part and maybe do the legs brown. I'm going to mark these trees 
just a loose mark of the tree, the shape. We have any comments? I would love if someone would comment because then I know you can hear me and then I'm not losing you or putting you to sleep. I do not want to put people to sleep at this time of day. And I'm just marking off all of those big shapes. Okay. I have to think about this because I, th I think we've got them all, you guys. I'm going to peek. I see the trees. I see those trees. I see I've missed a little bit on this cabin. So I'm going to put it back down like we would, you know, a transfer that hadn't come off yet. And mark that. And mark here. Here's some more snow. Up. Oh, we have missed. Missouri, and we have Diana, and is it Alda? Okay. I'm, um, hey, you guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for saying hi. I am going to now, you know, peek one more time, see if I have the basic shapes. I think I do. Yes. So now I will lift this up. And you get to start painting now. Set aside the transfer. And I'm going to start painting white. Because, I don't know, because you got to start somewhere. So I'm going to paint white, the areas that are white. Kind of come in around these trees. When I um, do this kind of thing... I'm not looking for anything to be super perfect. I like I like the look of like the colors running maybe a little bit. This is not a great brush. Let's try a different brush. Um, and just kind of come in here with the mountains and, and rough them in too. I'm going to share with you one of my favorite art supplies today. Um, but what I use is just one of the possibilities. It is not a mandatory thing, but I love to use water soluble crayons. So I use um, I use these guys, Karan Dosh water soluble you'll see that my package is very well loved and oh, this is also a um an, a supply you can get on blick or any art place you can get it on amazon places like that i do sell um i do sell some here in the shop um, small packages. It's hard for me to sometimes paint and talk at the same time. So if I stutter and stop, that's why. But I think I've got the mountains pretty well in here. And while those set up a bit, I'm painting upside down, you guys. We're going to start on the sky. We're going to use some white for the sky. And I brought along a few blues for the sky. So here's a pretty dark blue. Let's see if I can get a few little spots. I like to mix my paint right on the surface that I'm painting on because I'm a bit of a rebel that way. Um, skies have all sorts of colors of blue in them, right? So I'm using lots of colors of blue and I'm gonna use quite a bit of white and we're just going to color up our sky here. Have fun with it. Just start. And, you know, you can finesse it later. We all have the ability to look at the sky and kind of see how it looks and how different clouds wisp around. So just um, 
go for that. Go for it to look like a sky in your neck of the woods. So that those colors of blue, um, can you see that? I think you can. Let me lift this up a little bit, get that out of the way. So we're just, um, I'm still painting upside down, you guys. I'm going to have to turn this at some point and make sure I'm putting things in the right places. But we're just coming in with different blues and white and quite a bit of white to lighten and have the sky. I like to, um, I'm, I like how this side is looking because there's different colors of blue. I didn't over blend. I'm going to bring some over here and just kind of doop, 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 little crisscrossy moves for now. Wispy clouds maybe and just going kind of fast. This is not hard. You just have to not be scared and you have to not, um, I don't know, not worry that there's only one particular way for a sky to look. They look all sorts of different ways. I like the dark. So I'm going to add a little bit more here and there. Um, I'm going to add some more white and a tiny bit of this turquoise color because it's just fun and it gives it gives that nice. So I'm going to keep doing that. Um, hello, Lenny from London and Tim is this. I'm painting this on an Iron Orchid Designs wood panel. So it is on a, a wood panel. You, my original one I did on a repurposed cabinet door. So here, I'm gonna turn this a bit so I can get at this. Here we're using the actual uh, wood panels available from an IOD stockist. This is the largest one, the 12 by 16 inch wood panel. And if you're just tuning in, what I, what I did initially was um, use a, an artist type of transfer paper, Sorrel is the brand that I'm using, uh, but it's like a carbon paper and I used it with the transfer to mark out the big areas of the design so that I can come in and, and just hit those big areas. When we get back to the, I'm gonna just swirl those clouds around a little bit. When we get back to putting the transfer on, the transfer has all sorts of detail that adds the shadow and will help, you know, keep things in highlight because there is no shadow. I'm going to go dark next to the mountains a little bit just because I feel like it. Put some of that over here. And then later, if I don't like how something looks, you know, the nice thing with these water-based paints is you can keep working with them until you like what you're seeing. So I'm just coming in up to the mountains and I'm working pretty quickly in part because we're on a live video, but also in part because you don't have to be too slow and deliberate here. Just ooh, look at that. I think that's a really cool looking cloud. We'll put some things over here that maybe wisp out like clouds and I'll worry about balance and stuff like that later. So now we have some mountains and we have some sky, right? Howdy, Sharita. If I've missed anyone, we have Australia in the house and Gracie and Michelle, thanks for watching. Um, I am going to now put in a little, I have a can of water here somewhere, but I don't remember where I put it. So, I don't know. I'll just use my paper towel and see if I can find my water. I don't know, you guys. Hang tight. Look at the sky and the mountains. I can't find my water, you guys.
Okay, well, I'm back. Still no water, but I do have a fresh pack of my Curran Dosh crayons. We're going to use, I'm going to use my old ones to start out. These are very well loved. <laughs> you see, they've been around the block several times. This is a great art supply to take on the road with you. Um, these are so little now. That one's black. I'm looking for a brown. Let's see. I might have to open the new pack. These are a special edition that were, um, this is kind of a tan. We can use this for the color of the cabin. So I'm just taking these crayons and I'm putting some of, these are kind of just pigment in a crayon form, right? So I'm putting that brown for the cabin. I'm gonna put a little bit over here the legs on that picnic table. And I sure wish I knew where my water was. I might have to use my energy drink as, as a source of liquid. At least I'll take a sip of it and use it as a source of as a source of energy. I'm gonna put out some clear coat, clear varnish. Water would work for this too. But can you see that? I'm activating the pigment in that brown crayon. A dark brown would be nice. So I'm gonna use some paint as well and the paint also activates anything wet will activate um, the pigment in these in these crayons. I may need to turn this around, you guys, because I I can't tell. I'm going to refer to my transfer for some of the detail about what goes where, and like this part is the eaves under under that big pile of snow. So I'm gonna grab some more white. We're gonna have a lot of snow down here. So I'm grabbing some white and mixing in some brown. For the eaves, we're gonna, you know, just come in here and make this different shades of brown. I probably will give this cabin a red door. I'm mixing white paint and clear coat with the brown paint and the crayons just to get some brown on that cabin. So this area is all of the logs from the log cabin, making it brown, painting for now around that door. And I'm just, you know, going for basic shapes the shapes that we lined out earlier. I'm leaving the window as it is, because like I said earlier, I wanna leave that kind of yellow so that it'll look like some light is coming from inside. When we put this back on, all of the detail is gonna come from the black lines on the, on the stencil or excuse me, on the transfer. So we'll be able to um, put all that detail back in later. So just these color blocks are gonna be enough. I gotta see what that is. That's the chimney. So I'm gonna go around the chimney. There's a lot of snow on top of the chimney. Do we have any comments? Our crayons. Art crayons are awesome, Shannon. Yes, they are. These, um, there, there are probably other brands. I have to tell you, I'm very, very partial to the Caran d'Ache. They're made in Switzerland. And, and you can tell from this set, I've had this for years. I have um, a set of all of the colors, but you can start small with a set of eight or 12 and they are wonderful. Um, they're wonderful to use in mixed media because you can, you know, if, if you're traveling and you want to bring your art along, you could just have a little bit of white paint 
and some of these crayons and you'll have all the colors you could ever need. So I am combining all the things. So we have white paint, brown paint, brown crayons, clear coat. And my main point is not that you have to have all these things, but my main point is you can create something awesome with what you have on hand. Kind of know your materials and how they work. And, you know, don't get hung up on the specifics, right? You don't need one particular thing. So we have a cabin here and a cabin there. There's a door on this one that is going to stay brown. We have trees over here and a lot of trees over here. I'm going to mix this white paint down here. It's going to be the snow. It has a little bit of brown in it, but you know, snow on the ground gets that way. So let's get some green for our trees. I'm going to open this brand new pack because some of my colors are missing from my existing ones. Um, Cody's General Store. Is that you, Jody? Hello, if that's you. Thanks for joining in. So a new pack of these are, this is a pack of cool colors, but I know that it has um, some nice greens and blues in here. I'm going to pick out these two because they look like pine trees to me. And I'm just going to mark up some of this area. If I had the water, I could activate these with water. I don't, so I'm going to activate with um, a clear varnish. Put a little blue in there so it's like a so it's like an aspen pine or whatever. I'm I like the blue of the the blue and the green of the pine trees. You don't have to work this fast unless you're doing a live video and you want to get everything in. I'm going to grab a smaller brush for those trees. This one's pretty tiny. Let's get the clear coat. Putting some of that right on there. I use my surface as my palette too. And I'm just gonna spread that around, activate those crayons. We'll probably throw some white in there too to lighten some of that up. I don't even mind that. You can see the wood through there. I, I like that and I'm not, I'm not trying to eliminate all the crayon marks either. I'm going to put a little more white. Some of what I'm doing might make a purist rather uncomfortable here. It's not necessarily the best practice to um, put your paint right on your surface, but I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. So here we have it. We're doing that. Um, and I'm just being, you know, pretty loose with the color. Like I have said, I don't know, a bunch of times, we're going to add the, um, we're going to add the transfer back on here, which is going to give us detail. And then we can, um, then we can what? What, you guys? Then we can, this needs more then we can finesse and fine tune if we're feeling like we got some color in the wrong place or whatever we think. So I'm just coming around, trying to get these trees, lighten some of them up. I highly recommend if you are into uh, mixed media, anything, and you can use these crayons on on any surface, they are really just basically pigment in a crayon form. So you can use them on your furniture projects. You can use them on canvas. You can use them on watercolor paper. You mix them with paint and um, 
just get limit unlimited numbers of colors. So here we go, just getting the green of these trees, a little bit of whiteness in here to lighten that up. Okay. Just uh, going to town here. There'll be there's a lot of white in here. That's all right because it's snowing, right? We got, we have that. I have a thing for red doors. So let me see if I can find a red crayon. If I don't have a red one, we'll make an orange door. Let's make an orange door on this. Using the varnish again because I don't have water. We're going to make that door orange. There's that. I'm going to wipe this off and, whoops, the brush just came apart. We're going to do this and kind of down here, this is the, the legs of the snow-covered table. I'm leaving those brown and hoping they will be approximately in the right place when we put the transfer on. I'm going to grab a yellow. A lot of this will be covered up with the black of the transfer. So it won't be so screamingly bright when we get that transfer back on there. But for now, there. What else do we need to do? We need to do the chimney. Chimney is here. So I have that color and I don't have red because I just don't have it. So we're going to go pink, pink with orange. Use what you have. Pink and orange can make a nice brick, right? It's sort of like a Grateful Dead looking brick. It's a very brightly colored chimney. So maybe I don't want it that bright. I will put a tidge of this brown, but just a tiny tidge. Oops, that brown kind of took over. Get some clear coat, make some go away. There, that's, that's good enough for a chimney for me. Now that we have all that, we're gonna come back with white again. Whoops, I know I did this the first time I did this too. I, I neglected to do this part brown. This is part of the eaves of the second house. So I'm gonna put some of that on here. Wonder what time it's getting to be. My time flies so quickly. Let me see if there's questions here. What is the brand? Oh, the brand of the crayons is um, Caron Dash. Sounds French, but they're Swiss. This is the brand. I sell small packs here um, and I do ship, but if you are interested in a bigger pack or you're not anywhere near me, you can go to an art supply place like Blick or Amazon. Um, Amazon gets a lot of business, so I I like to uh, spread my money around to other small businesses and Blick, even though they're nation, I think they're nationwide, they're a artist owned store. Artists serving artists is what Blick likes to um, say. So uh, you could you could buy them at Blick or another art supply place. I have a set of 83 different colors, but you can start small with eight or you can even buy them one at a time. So that's kind of a cool deal. So now I'm putting white, which is the white of the, the snow here. Grabbing some more and just putting it where I lined in those shapes earlier. I hope I'm not giving anyone a headache by working so fast or talking so much. Um, if there's any questions, I'm trying to catch them as I'm doing this, but if I miss, um, I will come back later and, and answer any. So 
Right now, it's hard to tell the difference, right, between the mountains and the snow on the houses, on the cabins. But when we put the transfer on, it will become evident. I think I just got snow in my eaves. That's all right. There. We need snow on here. We'll take some white and put very white snow on this part. This is that, I, I think it's a picnic table. It's got those uh, crisscrossed legs. So I'm just putting some snow on that one. And then we're gonna put snow everywhere else too. So more white. And that's kind of the last part of our colorizing here, I think. Looking at the transfer again, I'm going to pull you up a second. Here I still am. So we're going to look at this and compare it to our paint and see if there's any other place that we need something other than snow. And I don't think so. I think we got it. So we're just going to just kind of crisscross in here and lay down our snow, get the board all colorized. There's some of this brown over here, which I am totally good with because if you live in a snowy place like I do here in Minnesota, you know that snow doesn't stay pristine and white for all that very long. So sometimes it gets a little bit of a brownish cast. I'm going to blend the sky into the snow a little bit more before we finish up here, but here we go with this. So we're just adding all that in, coming around, lots of snow. The snow is whirling like it's Christmas, even though it's only Thanksgiving. Um, happy Thanksgiving, by the way. This has been a crazy set of years for the whole entire world, I know. But here we all are just um, celebrating, getting by, and, and making art when we can. So... I'm going to leave a little, well, I'm not. I'm going to do this and then maybe add a little bit of brown for the stems, for the stems. Trees don't have stems. They have trunks for the trunks of those trees. But I can do that on top of this white and just working very quickly, like I said, in part because of the, the live video part and in part because we don't have to fuss so much about the specific details here. I keep squirting out white paint, coming up to my trees, coming up over here, hoping that I'm not going over my time on my video. I'm gonna mix in some of this Scott, this light, lighter blue down in here and just kind of blend white into that. Sometimes there's reflection, so I'm going super light with reflecting some of the blue down here. Bring some of the white into that. And just kind of, oops, where's the snow? Where's the sky end and the snow begin? I don't know, somewhere here. So a little bit more of that. I like seeing brush strokes. Makes me feel painterly and artistic, so I'm going to take some of this and put it on the edge. There's too much blue there for me. I'm going to come around here just a little bit, just a little cast from the, from the sky. So we have a little blue in our snow and a little brown in our snow. And now we're going to dry this up, you guys. Can you still see it? Okay, we're going to dry this up. Getting my heat gone. Who's... I'm only third. Thank you, Misty. I'm only 39 minutes in. Look how quickly you can do this, you guys. So I'm going to dry this. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm not going to try to uh, speak over the hair dryer, but or the craft dryer, but please go ahead and ask any questions. I will get to them later, adding paint as I go. 
Of course, I can't get through a whole project without getting my hands dirty. So we're drying this up. A little piece of clear coat stuck there. So what are y'all doing for Thanksgiving? When you own a small business like I do, this is an incredibly busy time of year. Uh, so my husband and I are going out to eat. I think some of the kids are going with us. I'm not positive. They don't like to commit. They, they like to keep it loose, which I guess if you can. So we're going to go to a place here in Afton that's called the Afton House. They do a, I hope you can hear me, they do a buffet that is just delightful. Um, it's an old, old historic inn and restaurant. So they use the whole space. You, you could eat in the, in the wine bar, you could eat in the casual bar, you could eat in the formal dining room. And you go through a buffet line that is salads and breads and crudités, veggie, veggie uh, trays. They have turkey, of course, but they also have roast beef and fish and all the desserts. And I was very, very surprised the first time I went of how much I liked it. I thought it would feel funny. I'm feeling along here to see if we're getting dry. I thought it would feel funny to go out to eat on a what I think of as a family holiday. But when you bring your family with you, or if your family is busy elsewhere, I think we're getting close. It's really, it was really a delightful thing. Okay, I'm still here. I'm hot. <laughs> so dinner at your house, Jody, 22 people. That sounds fun. Um, I, I typically had big groups of people at my house as well for Thanksgiving. But um, like I said, it's just been the way things have been in the last couple of years. So what I feel like when I go to the Afton house now, I tell people I feel like a who down in Whoville because it's very much a community gathering place and it doesn't feel too formal or too, it doesn't feel cold at all. It feels very community and very awesome. So here's what we have, right? Just the basic colors. We're gonna put the transfer on now. If you guys are watching me, I'm pretty sure you understand that to do this really, really the best way, I should um, put sealer on this, let it dry, and then do the transfer. But because it's a live video, I'm going to take my chances, and I'm going to try to go on right over the, the paint. The paint is completely dry. This is the moment of truth. I'm going to line this up. Oh, there it is. Yep, not bad at all. There's the door. There's the window. There's the chimney. I got too much brown right here. But you know what? That's okay. That area is wide open. I'm going to paint white after I get the transfer down. It's pretty good right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just spread. Yes. Adhere this this way. And I'll turn it around again so you can see it the right way. Can you see that? Let me get the, the transfer stick. 
I'm especially excited to see how the doors lining up and the in the yellow just a little bit peeking through those windows. The chimney's looking awesome. These trees are in the right place, so that's great. And let's hope, even though I didn't seal this. So I will confess that if I was doing this not on a live video, I would do all the steps. I would make sure it was sealed and really dry. And I also would work more slowly, not because you have to, but because I think it's just more enjoyable. I like to be creative and do artsy things just to get in the groove and, and I don't know, it's like, um, it's just very peaceful. And when I'm hurrying, I don't feel quite so peaceful. So don't go this fast. Lean into it and enjoy the process. I'm going fast for you guys. So it's coming, it is working, it's coming off onto the dry paint. I know it's not too exciting. Who's watched up oh, do we have? There's a, a Carmen and Sandy, thank you. Coming back down. <laughs> so any last minute questions or comments, please. Well, I'm not close to being finished here. It's gonna take a while to rub off. But you know the drill on uh, transfer. So we're just going to keep doing the process until it's all transferred onto the surface of this 12 by 16 inch IOD wood panel. I have to assume, because the sisters are brilliant, that when they design transfers and pro product yeah projects and products for us they consider all the things and that it's not an accident that this transfer fits perfectly on the 12 by 16 inch wood panel those uh sally and josie got it going on they really really think of the details um we are so blessed that they are the creative artistic people they are because they know what they know what we need and what we'd love and they deliver <laughs> so thank you Sally and Josie looks like I missed a couple of these trees when I was marking off am I gonna sweat it no I'm not I'm gonna add some green in there now the only difference is gonna be you know, I'll be on top of the black a bit. I do it this way because I like the black as a whole to be the very top layer so it pops the most and you get a lot of detail. But if I miss it, it's okay. I can come and do that. If I have to come back over with a little bit of black paint or black ink, I can, but it's probably going to be fine just the way it is. I feel like we've got enough stressful things, making art and being creative and doing our projects for ourselves is not anything we need to get upset about. If we're, if we're getting bent up, we're doing it wrong, I think. So just enjoy it, roll with it. It's all about problem solving and creativity. Let's see what we're getting here. Yep, getting up most of it. So it's coming off very well. Anybody got the time for me? I don't wanna go over an hour. Hello, Maria from Idaho. Um, Jody, you asked about drawing the image. I, I'm assuming you tuned in a little bit later. So while I'm doing this, I'll explain a bit that I used a transfer paper. This is Sorrel 
transfer paper available from Amazon or an art supply place. You can use carbon paper if you have that. Um, basically, it's a wax. It's, it's like carbon paper, old dressmakers transfer stuff. And I put it down on the wood surface. And then I laid the transfer on its nonstick paper. You don't want to lift, you don't want to take it off. You want to use it with, boy, this guy's getting stubborn on me. You want to use it with the nonstick paper underneath. And just, I used a, a colored pencil and I traced the shapes with this transfer paper underneath, just the basic outlines of the big shapes so that I would know where to put color. I don't know how much more you want to watch me rub this, but let's see where we are. Hello from Sweden. Hey, Doris. Um, I've got 10 minutes to go. Should I keep rubbing? Can I get a thumbs up or a heart or an anything? Do you want to see how this comes out? Or I can show you later, too. I'm going to switch it this way. See if I can get at it better from this angle. I would love to be able to finish it up and show you. We're not going to be able to seal it on camera, but that part is very straightforward. Also, I like to let my transfers um, really settle, especially if I haven't sealed first. I will let it settle overnight, and I'll give it a quick burnish tomorrow, make sure all the edges are down, and then... I will seal it with a water-based sealer. Boy, I think we've got most of it off. Come on, coming in here, making sure these tree tops, these tree lines are off. A little more mountain action here. Yep, that's all off. There's a little bit here. Let me lift it and look. Couple of lines. Couple of tree lines. There we go. I really like it. Here's what we have. Let's come back a bit. There's how it's looking. I want to try to come in on that house. Can you see that orange door and the trees? Yeah, the trees are cool, aren't they, Shannon? Where it's just loose. It's, you know, I like it better that I did. I don't know exactly where they're going to be. I, I messed up here. This should be white, not brown. So I'm going to, you know, it's like, yep, I don't, I don't especially like that that way. Oh, thank you. Good to see you, Bob. I'm going to add um, white paint right here because this is part of the snow covered. But you see what happens if we apply the color after the fact, I cover up those black lines. And I don't really want to do that. I like them to be nice and dark and popping. So I may have to come back in there and add some in with a with a paint marker or something later, but I, I do want the top of that roof to be snow covered. So there's white for that. You always get to do a little bit of touch up at the end. If you miss in your drawing or you miss in your painting, you can finesse it after the fact. Let that snow drop down on the house like that. So there we go. You see how nice and clear, can you? These lines, and if I had painted on top, I would have lost, it would, it would all look like that, just kind of. I, that's okay with me for one part, but I, but I don't want all of it to look like that. 
Um, I think here I need some more blue around those trees. That shouldn't be all snow. So I'm just going to add some of this light blue in a tiny bit of the darker blue and bring that in along the tree line. Might need some white to, there we go. So just kind of coming in around here, get the bigger brush. If I need to finesse some sky or some anything later, I will. But that's what we have. And I love this technique. Um, whoops. I love this technique. So when, do a wash. Yes, there you go. Do a wash. Doing a wash would be better. So uh, more transparent, not not opaque like that. Um, but you can make up for things after the fact, as long as most of it is on top and coming through black, you, you get a good look. I am going to um, add a little brown in here. Whoops. For the trunks. <laughs> I said stems earlier for the stems of the tree. For, I'll do that later and then I'll let this really really dry and I will do a, a top coat a clear coat on it thanks Maria um well Megan go back to the beginning and you'll see how simple this is um it's a matter of transferring the big shapes from the transfer using um using a transfer paper that you can get at an art supply place um, and then coloring in the, those broad shapes and then putting the transfer back down on top. So that's it. This is my um, adding color to paintable transfers, take two. This is one method for doing it. The Magic crayons, again, are from Switzerland. They're Caran d'Ache. I sell small sets in my shop here in Afton, but you can get them on Amazon or from an art supply place like Blick. Um, you can buy them one crayon at a time, or you can buy them in a pack of 82 if you're crazy like me and you want all the colors. Thank you, Barbara. Um, Sandy Stanford says, would carbon paper smear? Yeah, you could use the old fashioned kind of carbon paper, which is more smeary, right? Is that a word? More smeary than this stuff. This is, it's a wax free, so like dressmaker's carbon. I'm old enough that I took home ec in school and we used uh, dressmaker's carbon that had a lot of wax. This is wax free transfer. It does not smear, but again, use what you have. And if what you have is um, carbon paper, it might smear a little bit, but just you could spray it with a clear coat to make sure it doesn't get too much in your white paint. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do. So use what you have. Let me know if any questions the heat is on in this building. It's cold outside. We've had quite a bit of snow here in Minnesota, but I feel so hot inside here. Um, I am an IOD stockist in Afton, Minnesota, which is in the Twin Cities metro area, basically. I if I am your stockist, please come see me. We're open Thursday through Sunday, and I'm here a whole lot more than that. Um, if I'm not your local stockist, please find one by using the Iron Orchid Designs Retail Locator, Stockist Locator on their webpage, ironorchiddesigns.com. Find someone close to you. Find someone who ships. Most of us ship 
Um, I do, but you also have an advantage finding someone close to ship to you. Um, you'll save some money that way on shipping, which is crazy expensive. Maria, did that answer you? I'm in Afton, which is on, it's just due east of St. Paul, about 20 miles. So uh, we're definitely within commuting distance for workers. Um, and I'm just at an hour right now. So I think I better close. Uh, it's been great to uh, spend some time with you guys today. If you didn't catch the beginning, please go back. It is not a difficult process, but it's really pretty fun. Yes, yeah, Sandy, I think it's great to try it on something small. Um, the name of my store is Liza Jane Designs. So I'm on St. Croix Trail right in Afton. The population's only around a thousand. So um, if you come here, you'll be able to find me. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining and a very, very happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Um, as crazy as these times are, there's lots of blessings still to count. So I count you guys all as a blessing and I definitely count the IOD sisters um, as, as a huge blessing to all of us. So take care. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Mwah. Bye.